guys, welcome back. Today's video is another Friday Faves and Fails, and I do have some fails this week. I'm gonna kick off with two things because I'll forget if I don't tell you. I did do a live TV talk on my other channel. I'll link it below. Maybe I will. We'll see if I remember. Um, a Kai Flix, if you will. I did it live on Tuesday. I'm not sure how the format works. If you enjoy it, please let me know. Go watch it. Let me know what you think. Otherwise, I may go back to the original format, which was effectively just me sitting down and chatting about TV shows. Maybe it would be fun to do an Instagram live beforehand to get your feedback on what you're enjoying. Maybe we'll do it where I'll do the TV chat once that's posted, then we'll do a little live chat afterwards. I really enjoy the engaged, like instant chat element of TV talk. And I'd like to incorporate that in some way, but if the live format doesn't work for you guys, let me know. So number one, all TV recommendations, entertainment type stuff will be over there now. Um, number two, another thing I don't have in front of me and so I will definitely forget, Theme Hospital. I downloaded Theme Hospital from a website called, and I'm gonna say it's called GOG, but maybe it's GOG. It's GOG, I uh, downloaded it, I think it's like £4.50 or something. It is everything. And I downloaded it on my Mac as well, so Windows, you'll be no problem whatsoever. It's exactly the same as I remember, and I am completely obsessed. I have about 10 minutes to film this video before I go and get the children. It's imperative that this video is filmed in that time, because then I have a short window of time for editing and other YouTube things, after I've collected the children, before I make dinner, because the entire evening will be dedicated to Theme Hospital. I am so excited to have it back in my life, and I felt I should tell you that it is available. I am in no way affiliated with this website, uh, but for such a short, short amount of time, I was gonna say, for such a small amount of money, you can have your childhood back. And, I mean, isn't that priceless? Um, Let's kick off with some fails. Oh, let's kick off with some fails. I don't always have fails to share, but I have two. One is a bit meh and the other is like, oh. The first is the L'Oreal Elvive. This is just the more than shampoo in general. I've tried all three that they sent me now. And initially I was like, yeah, I'm getting it. I was using it with the scrubby thing they sent me, like the scalp brushy thing. Um, I can see how this works. It kind of reminds me of like a co-wash type thing where you use a conditioner instead of or in front of the shampoo. It's a very strange situation, but I, I kind of understood where they were going with it. It felt like more of a nourishing and less harsh um, washing experience, but I just felt like it was like build up, build up, didn't really give me that super clean feeling. And as you know, I already struggled with getting a super clean feeling with my hair, um, and even more so in the summer, but this is just not for me. I think if you've got Hair that really needs um, a lot of extra care, like it needs conditioner more than it needs the shampoo, you might really, really like this. Um, you might like this if you've got coloured hair that fades really quickly. For me, this was not the one at all. Any of these. I've tried all three versions. I think there are only three. And they're nice. Maybe I could use them occasionally. But as my regular shampoo, I need something that's really going to make my hair feel clean. The second thing is this. And don't judge me because... You know, this has been used. It's not the cleanest thing in the world. This is an epilator. Now, for three weeks, I was very, very diligently using an epilator. I epilated all over both legs. It's painful. It is painful. I have epilated elsewhere in the past. I used to wax my own bikini line. I'm very prone to um, ingrown hairs, and that's the reason I stopped waxing, and I started using a home IPL. And for the bikini line, absolutely amazing. I don't think that the hair elsewhere in my body has got a high enough contrast. So like the hair on my legs, it's not dark enough for the IPL to work very well. And I think that the hair on my face, which is definitely dark enough, is just too stubborn. It's like, it's man stubble hair, really, really tough stuff. So the IPL doesn't work elsewhere, which is super annoying. I will say the epilator works really well on my face. Painful. I need to be super careful about what I use afterwards. Ideally, if I'm gonna epilate my face, and I'm talking, I wouldn't do my top lip, because hell. Uh, but my chin, where I'm a bit tougher, but it still hurts. I would epilate here, but ideally it needs to be a time where I can do it in the morning. Immediately, I'll use my Skin Doctor's, um, what's it called, it's like a hair minimizer spray. 
and it's it's uh, an antiseptic, but it's supposed to reduce the hair growth. I don't know if that's true, but the antiseptic part of it definitely works because I don't break out when I pluck or shave or epilate and I use that. But ideally it would be in the morning, use that and then nothing else touches my skin all day because it's going to be way more prone to breaking out or rashing or something if I'm using something like this where it's like so much all at once than if I just shave or if I pluck the odd hair. By the odd hair, I mean like 10 at a time. It's seriously, I know I'm beating a dead horse at this point, but I, I do want those of you who really do struggle with facial hair to understand that I'm not talking about a few hairs. It's a lot to deal with. So this is still an area that I will be using the F layer on. With my legs, I just don't understand. I don't understand it at all. I couldn't get them completely smooth and because I was epilating them all the time, they always felt rough. Not just like slightly stubbly, but just my skin felt rough. My skin didn't feel as nice. Now I don't know if this is partly because when you shave, you're exfoliating. And so I wasn't getting that same exfoliation, like effectively like dermaplaning. Uh, I wasn't getting that same exfoliation on a regular basis or what. But when I let my um, thigh leg hair grow out, it didn't have that same problem. It seemed to be epilator specific. Um, it was just really annoying. I really, I went through so much pain to get myself into it to the point where I felt like I'd got most of the hair. I understand about hair cycles and you know, it's never gonna be 100% smooth. You can never get totally, totally smooth legs with an epilator. And I also understand that it could be cutting them and not plucking them out but I'm talking about the texture of my skin was different. And I just don't think my skin enjoys having things plucked from it. And so I've gone back to shaving. I've gone back to itching all the time. It's very annoying. Speaking of itching all the time, um, I got this in a FabFit Fun Box recently. It's from Esca. I don't think that matters. You could just get a dry brush from anywhere. This is an absolute lightsaver. Lightsaver. This is an absolute lightsaver. I use this basically to scratch myself. I use it everywhere, like this is really, really great. I am an itchy person and I moisturize every single day everywhere, but I am just an itchy person. Um, and I just dry brush, instead of any other exfoliating now on my body, I do this. And I try to do it before I get in the shower or the bath, uh, but I also keep it by my bed because at nighttime, if my legs are itching, I just quickly get them and this is amazing. It's like the most, relief I've ever had from any kind of itching. And I get Lee to do my back and it's like going to a spa. Dry brushes, they have their uses. I'm not sure about the whole thing of like lymphatic drainage and cellulite and all that stuff that people used to tout it as. But if you are very, very itchy and you feel like you're never gonna be scratched enough, this is the one. This is like everything. A dry brush, doesn't matter where it's from. Um, right, I've got two more things. I told you, speedy this week. Um, Corksicle, I talked about this in the live video last week, but I felt like it, it deserved to be in a properly filmed one. Um, I got this in my FabFit Fun Box as well. There have been dupes at multiple different supermarkets over the past few weeks. I know they had them in Aldi, people were telling me constantly. Um, I saw one for five pounds in Morrison. Someone said they've been in Asda. It's basically just a small mug Theoretically, this was originally supposed to be a wine glass that would keep your wine cold. I use this for coffee. Um, it also comes with this that you can open and close if you so wish, but I tend to just use it in the house as my coffee cup because my coffee stays so much warmer when I use this. I haven't had cold drinks out of it yet. It's too small of a cup. This is crazy. Like if I wanted to, I've got a big tumbler for water. This is more for small drinks. So if I wanted to have like, um, the other thing I'm gonna show you in a second, maybe I could have that in this and it would keep it cold. It would stop the ice from melting quite so quickly, but it's absolutely perfect for coffee. I use it almost every day. The only reason I wouldn't use it is if it's in the dishwasher. That is the only reason. Um, but you don't need to have a corkscrew one specifically, but I would absolutely recommend some kind of double walled mug or glass, whatever you wanna call it. Uh, if you are someone who doesn't drink your coffee as quickly as you should. Um, last thing I want to talk about is this M&S Sparkling Mexican Lime and Lemongrass Presse. I don't know if I've ever talked about this before, but if you are looking for a non-alcoholic cocktail type drink, this is so nice. I liked it anyway. In the past I've had it with um, a spirit, so like with some vodka in it or something like that as a bit of a, 
um, nice, it's like a nice summer drink. Uh, but I bought it last week because I'm still not drinking alcohol. As a bit of a test, let's see how it makes me feel. Um, I'm not missing it at all, which is absolutely incredible. I have had some very stressful moments recently, incredibly stressful moments, familial stuff going on. And um, there have been moments where I've been like, I'm gonna need a glass of wine when I get home. But I really, I don't even, it was such a habit to automatically feel, oh, you'll have a glass of wine to like unwind, you'll have a glass of wine if you're feeling stressed. And I, I just wanted to replace that with other things. And I'm absolutely astounded how quickly I don't miss it. Uh, but I do miss the ritual of like making us a drink at the weekend. So what I've been doing is I'll have something like this or I'll get like a nice tonic, like a cucumber and mint tonic or something that's like that kind of thing. Um, ice, lime and some mint. And it feels like you're having a drink. I miss the kind of cocktail experience. So I think I'm gonna kind of dabble with some non-alcoholic cocktails. I may even buy myself some non-alcoholic spirits. They seem incredibly expensive and a bit nuts to me. Like it's so, like they're the same price as normal spirits, but they're just non-alcoholic, so we'll see. Uh, I am actually going to a friend's house, a work thing. It's not a work thing, but the girls from work, we're all getting together at one of our houses on Saturday. And um, I was thinking if there was ever a time, because there's a few of us that are driving, um, to test one of those like non-alcoholic gins, I might. I won't have gone by the time you see this. If you can recommend one, let me know. Um, but yeah, if you are looking for just like a non-alcoholic, but it feels a bit like a drink drink, this is really, really nice. I've had that a few times. I've also taken it to people's houses and everyone says how nice it is. Uh, and I, it's not that sparkling. I do like to maybe top it up with like some extra fizzy water or something. And the more ingredients you add, the more it feels like a cocktail. Just putting it out there. So that's it for all of my Friday face and fails this week. Like I said, we talked a lot about TV stuff. I feel like I would like to dedicate an entire live to Real Housewives of Beverly Hills once I'm all caught up because we are binging that currently. Um, totally obsessed with Lisa Rinna. Can't get enough of the news about Erica Jane. Um, just can't wait to catch up and see how that all plays out because so much can happen in a season, let alone a couple, and we are a couple behind. Uh, that's it for today. I have video coming on Sunday that's a shot my closet, which I'm excited for you to see because it's a fun one, a bit different. Um, but otherwise, I will see you then, and thanks for watching. Bye.